Hello, it's another edition of Plus Reports, a completion of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Obiuku. We are starting off this week's edition on real translation in Lagos. The 2022 deadline set for the completion of the Lagos Rail Mass Transit LRMT projects remains achievable. By 2023, Nigerians will enjoy the benefits of real infrastructure that is being developed in Lagos State. Governor Babajide Songwulu gave this assurance while addressing journalists. Plus TV, Africa's Lagos State Government House correspondent, Love Ikuku Yedokun, has more. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu and other government functionaries expecting the rail projects, the blue and red lines. The construction of the project began over 10 years ago by the former administration of Babatunde Fashola. The governor explained that a blue line was designed to run from Okokomaiko on the Lagos Badagri Expressway through an elevated line crossing the Igomo Lagoon to Marina on Lagos Island. Iconic station, which is like a midpoint, you know, on the red line. Um, Ikeja still have further to the north, it still have um, Agege, Abadu, um, um, Ijijui Shaga and all of it. And on the southern part, it still has um, Oshudi. Mushin, um, I mean, and all of that. When the inspection was over, the governor assured that commercial operations will be flagged up in the first quarter of 2023. We're believing that our timelines are on track. We're believing that our contractors are working on schedule. There are a few hiccups here, but we believe that we'll surmount them, you know, and we we'll ensure that on a quarterly basis we we'll come out like this to monitor what is going on. But we're still on track with last quarter 2022 by the grace of god you know last quarter we hope that the train will move last quarter or first quarter 2023 we begin to see a real um, your train moving on this, on this the governor also highlighted the features of the ikeja and marina stations which are the meeting points of the red and blue rail line projects at um, ikeja we, had, we saw the station and we also saw the construction of the overpass the overpass is to ensure that vehicular movement can move over and above, you know, the train that we're going underneath, right? And we saw that work has commenced extensively. There are few issues, um, which is what you saw the small part where you have a generator which was gotten approval uh, with uh, with um, Odua, and that will be removed in the next one week. The Lagos State Government has repeatedly postponed the completion date of the Blue Line. But Governor Sawolu has assured Lagosians once again that the project will be commissioned before he leaves office. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Oyedoku, reporting for Plus TV, Africa. Lagosians are hopeful that the 2023 date fixed by the current administration will become a reality. The Nigerian Maritime Administration Safety Agency, NEMASA, has flagged up the first phase of the National Wreck Removal Exercise that began the process of reading Nigerian waters of over 3,000 identified wrecks and derelicts. It was organized by Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NEMASA, Nigerian Port Authority, MPA, and other stakeholders in the maritime industry. Plus TV, Africa's correspondent Destiny Momo was there and now reports. This is the official flag off of removal of wrecks from the Nigerian waters and stationed now at the Tinkan Island port around Lady Town. Um, the, the wreck has just been removed from the water, as you can see, officiated by the Minister of Transport. And the DG of the Massa did not fail to let us know that this is a two year or more than two years contract. This flag off of the removal of wrecks from Nigeria's waterways, dignitaries, stakeholders, and all attendees at the Badagri Creek enjoyed the beautiful view of waters as boats conducted drop offs organized by Nimasa. Minister of Transport Rotimi Amechi believes 
that though Nigeria's maritime industry has been silent for over 27 years, much can be achieved regarding maritime safety with all hands on deck. We can just take it to cabinet for them and just, yeah, at the end of the day, we'll start out how the wreck are removed and ensure that, I just told him that you need to look at a broader picture of the Nigerian water so that we make sure that safe navigation is something that are us or that Bashir Jamo, Director General of NIMASA, recalls the history of wreck havoc in maritime security and highlights the safety this development will bring. For summoning the political and financial will needed to match the demand of the moment to begin clearing the wrecks. The approval by the Federal Executive Council is a testimonial to the commitment of the President Buhari's administration to deliver on the, its robust transportation promise to Nigerians. Stakeholders from the maritime industry offer valid solution and also to convert wrecks from sea to wealth. Um, the Masa should recognize critical wrecks and start with them. These are wrecks that are most likely to get into the channels as soon as possible. Getting new ships and getting this industry to meet with what is going on in the world. We cut into pieces and we send it to our smelting plant where we convert into uh, construction rods, reinforcement rods, what you call. The wreck removal experts show us how to remove these wrecks that threaten the safety and security of our Gulf of Guinea. This exercise will be conducted in four phases which is Badagri Tinkan Island Axis, Western Zone Area, Eastern Zone, Central Zone, which will in turn happen throughout the country. Destin Momo for Plus TV Africa. Nemasa is charged with the responsibility of ensuring safety and security at sea. Expectedly, the exercise will open up the maritime industry to huge investment opportunities. In commemoration of the World Cleanup Day, a group of volunteers and enthusiasts have taken the campaign of beach cleaning to Lafayette with a call to residents to preserve the environment. This report highlights the challenges faced as a society in tackling the issues of packaging and plastic waste. The idea is moving from beach cleanup to a circular economy where people pick their plastics, recycle them, upcycle them, and convert them to help their livelihoods. Justin Akadonye has more. It is not a rare sight to go to a beach these days to only find plastic strewn about everywhere. What is worse is to see such a situation and not be faced by it all. Excitedly, these volunteers have converged on Lafayette with the intent of saving the environment in keeping with the sustainable development goals. Children and adults speak about their drive. Cleaning the beach is an interesting thing to do. It makes the society clean. People just come here and then they enjoy themselves and they leave a mess around. So someone has to take the responsibility to, to clean up the mess. Um, this is a natural state and we should leave it just the way we, we met it. Sincerely, I think, I think there needs to be a culture shift in the country. You have, um, for many people, a scenario where as long as their immediate environment is clean, they are fine. You have people throwing trash out of their cars, people throwing trash out of their houses onto the streets. In school, we have learned about the SDG goals and I've raised awareness in school about it to my advocates and students. So when coming here, I remind myself about it and we always talk about leaving a legacy behind. And I feel coming to this community and still bringing all of these different cultures and ages grouped together, we leave a legacy behind for the community. During the third Saturday in September, International Coastal Cleanup Day encourages people to read beaches of garbage. Awareness is also spread about preserving and protecting the world's oceans and waterways. For the organizers, the beach is not just a place to go for fun. They are adopting beaches across Lagos. We're joining over 50 million people in over 180 countries across the globe. And please don't throw plastic away from your moving cars. 
the water will not just take it away. It goes back into the ocean and based on statistics, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050. The beach is a nice place to come to relax, reflect and do a lot of things. And people have their fun and parties. But please always clean up after you. We found that, that um, our approach to uh, proper waste management is very, very appalling. And then we need to do more of this to encourage people to begin to sort their waste as source. Marine debris is one of the greatest threats to oceans around, but luckily it is an issue with which we all can play a part in the solution. Justin Akadoni for Plus TV Africa. Cleaning the beach improves the coastal and ocean ecosystem. Waste pollution is a serious issue in Lagos and it's up to residents to minimize waste generated. The wife of Lagos State Governor Ibijo Kes Songwolo has charged youths to be patient, disciplined, and be abreast of happenings in their localities in order to make Nigeria great. She gave this charge while speaking at a one-day youth sensitization program with the theme Youths and Moral Values in an Evolving Society, Challenges and Recommendation. Love Ikuku Oyedokun also captured this. These are the youths of Nigeria. These are the 143 youth groups represented here at the One Day Sensitization Program. The program is aimed at sensitizing them on the need to inculcate moral values despite the challenges in Nigeria. While welcoming the youths selected from both the formal and informal sector, Dr. Ibijo Kesa Wunlu enjoins them to be focused. We know this is the Z generation. Quite a number of the youths rely on the social media for information. But then we also want to encourage you to please keep abreast with what is happening in your country, in your state, in your locality, and be on top of it. In his brief remarks, Lagos State Deputy Governor Obafemi Hamzat told the youths frankly that there was no shortcut to success, but advised them to be solution providers. So there can be reasons to complain. The question is, what are we bringing to the table? People complain around the world, around even the best country in the world. You can see what is happening in America. They are fighting everything, vaccine, no vaccine. So the question is, what do we want to do as a people? But as expository and educative the program might seem, the youth, like Oliver Trist, expected more. I truly believe that knowledge is indeed the wealth of the nation, that we must actually show it in everything that we do. We must try to encourage today's Nigerian youth to work, get educated, and after acquiring that education, get a good job. Governor Babajide Samulu, who charged the youths to take advantage of various opportunities that are abound in the state, disclosed that the Lagos State Government Employment Trust Fund has given soft loans to over 40 startups. Some people they've given them grants directly, some, some people they've given them businesses, you know, development write-ups, so that they can indeed develop their business to full fusion. They are under the canopy there. The governor assured that the state will continue to create an enabling environment for youth in governance. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Oyedupe, reporting for Plus TV, Africa. We will now go on short break and we'll be right back for more. Please stay with us.